Want to speak real Italian from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at italianpod101.com. Hello everyone, welcome back to italianpod101.com. My name is Daisy. Mi chiamo Daisy. Mi chiamo Daisy. And in this video we're going to talk about the school culture in Italy. La cultura scolastica in Italia. La cultura scolastica in Italia. Scolastico comes from scuola, scuola with the C, be careful, not Q, scuola, which means school. First of all, let's talk about the length of studies, la lunghezza degli studi, lunghezza degli studi. School is mandatory till 16 years old in Italy, fino a 16 anni, la scuola è obbligatoria. Fino a 16 anni, till 16 years old, la scuola è obbligatoria. School is mandatory. So you start with five years of elementary school, which is la scuola elementare. Scuola elementare, cinque anni, cinque anni, five years. Cinque anni di scuola elementare. Then you have tre anni di scuola media. 3 years of junior high, 3 anni di scuola media, media literally meaning medium, then you have high school, 5 anni di scuola superiore, 5 anni di scuola superiore, also called superiori, superiori only, like highs, which still means high school though. So even though it's a cycle of 5 years again, you could technically drop out after 2. Anyway, uh, la scuola superiore, high schools, has three different types. Liceo, liceo. Liceo is that kind of school that actually prepares you for university. So we say that you get there in order to learn how to study for university and you can choose a specialization already. We call them indirizzi, indirizzi, which literally means addresses, okay? But in this case, it's the specialization of the school. For example, you can find liceo linguistico, liceo linguistico, language liceo, which is actually the one I did, <laughs> liceo linguistico, liceo scientifico, scientifico, of course, scientific one, artistico, artistico, about arts, and also liceo classico. Liceo Classico, which is the one where you study things like Latin and Greeks. So you kind of study the fundamental, the basics, in order to be ready to then study with, like, for example, rights or laws and so on. If you don't go to a liceo, though, so if you don't plan on going to university, actually, you don't really have to go to a liceo in order to go to university. You can do that anyway, but you get, let's say, a better preparation, or at least that's what it's advised. So if you don't go to a liceo, though, you can still choose between un istituto tecnico, istituto tecnico, technician institute, literally, where you get more tools, let's say, like for example, there is the Tecnologico, Istituto Tecnologico, or Economico, where you can study economics or technologies and stuff like that. Otherwise, you can go to an Istituto Professionale, Istituto Professionale, Professional Institute. These ones are more for people that just want to get a job like right away after school. In fact, here you get to know like how to do stuff. For example, you can go to Istituto Professionale Meccanico, Mechanics, Gastronomico, Gastronomics if you want to be a chef, or let's say Artigianale in general, Crafts, Artigianale. No matter which type of school you choose, at the end of the five years, you have to do an exam. No matter which type of school you decide to go to, after the five years, you have to take an exam, which is called Esame di Stato. Esame di Stato. States exam, literally, but also called Maturità. Maturità. Which is the maturity. So once you get that, you are an adult, 
let's say, and you get your diploma. Diploma. So the certificate. La notte prima della maturità è molto dura. The night before maturità, maturity, so this exam, è molto dura. It's really tough. Because you're basically tested on everything that you studied in the five years and you don't really know like which subject. Also, it has to be said that before, even after elementary school and junior high school, you had to take an exam, like a summary kind of exam on the whole cycle that you took. Nowadays, you don't have to because it depends on laws, but it's always changing. So I wouldn't be too sure about that for the future. For all of them, of course, there are public institutions, but also private ones. So, la scuola pubblica, la scuola pubblica, or la scuola privata, scuola privata, the private one. And there are also scuole cattoliche, scuole cattoliche, which are the ones run by nuns. Up to you to decide which one to go to. But if you go to the letter, you cannot skip religion. Religion, religione, religione. So if you're going to the public school, you can choose for your kid not to attend to that. While, of course, if you choose a Catholic one, they have to go. Let's talk about other subjects as well. They're called materie. Materie. If you think about materials, maybe you'll remember this word. Materie. Italiano. Italiano, Italian, grammatic and also literature. Sono molto brava in letteratura italiana. I'm really good at Italian literature. Sono molto brava in letteratura italiana. Ma la grammatica mi annoia. But, ma la grammatica, grammar, mi annoia. Bores me. So in the end, your mark wouldn't be that great because they go under the same materia, italiano. Materia scolastica, of course, if you want to say school subject. Matematica, mathematics, matematica. Storia, history, storia. Geografia, geography, geografia. Arte, arts. Musica, music. Scienze motorie. So, only scienze would be science, but scienze motorie is actually physical education. <laughs> you can also say educazione fisica. But scienze motorie is also really common, and that means motoris, sciences, meaning like what you use to move. Scienze motorie. Quale è la tua materia preferita? Quale è, qual è la tua materia preferita? Which is your favorite subject? La mia materia preferita è lingua straniera. My favorite subject is foreign language, lingua straniera. Nowadays, actually, kids study English at elementary school already, but it wasn't like that before. I think I started in junior high. And then you add another language, which could be English, French, or Spanish. So, inglese, lingua inglese. Lingua francese, lingua francese, if it's French, or lingua spagnola, lingua spagnola, if it's Spanish. As for me, I also studied lingua tedesca, lingua tedesca, German language, for example. Something that has to be said, which I think is really interesting compared to other cultures in school, is that we stay in the same classroom the whole day. <laughs> so you don't change classroom as a student depending on the subject that you're taking, on the class that you're taking, that you're learning, but it's the teacher that changes classroom. This may be really convenient because you don't have to move, right? Also, hours are made of 50 minutes, not an hour altogether, because then you have 10 minutes for the teacher to finish, like to sum it up, to finish some things and then exchange with the other one, but you stay in the same class the whole time, which also means that you have the same classmates for actually the whole cycle. So if you get some classmates first year of elementary school, you'll most likely stick with them till the end. Same things goes for junior high. Also, it's considered to be 
Like usually junior high is close to the elementary school and when you go from one school to the other and if some friends of yours are going to the same school, which most likely they are because they're really close by where you live already, you can like write who you would like to end up with in the same classroom and if they do the same, then you will be with them, probably. So yeah, it's a long, long time to spend together and also in high school as well. So you have five years and you're going to be with them the whole time. Of course, you can get transfers, some trasferimento, but i tuoi compagni di classe, i tuoi compagni di classe, your classmates, saranno gli stessi, will be the same, saranno gli stessi. Classes are, depending on schools, sometimes really, really crowded. For example, around 30 alunni. Alunni is another way to say students. 30 alunni. Then, if they keep like increasing, if someone else is coming, they may split the class up, ending up in two classes of around like 20 studenti. 20 studenti. For example, in my case, and I'm bringing you real experience <laughs> examples, it was 30 people the first year of high school, then someone else came in, I think 30 is the maximum, and so we had to split, and then we were like 16 and 15. But that means that at the end of the cycle, so in high school, since, since some people dropped off, or because you know, you can be bocciato, bocciato, essere bocciato, essere bocciato, to be bounced, <laughs> literally, but it means that you failed the year, so you have to repeat it. Otherwise, you are promosso, promoted, promosso. So if some of them were bocciati, it meant that you were decreasing. In fact, my last year of high school, we were 11 only, which was a nightmare when you had to go through interrogations. Interrogazioni means like oral tests, because it was always your turn. Basically, it was really quick. Every school has around 30 hours per week, so kids go till 2 p.m. mostly and then it could be that two afternoons they could stay more or some schools go on Saturdays as well. Talking about time, let me also say that punctuality is really important. I mean, we do allow, let's say, five minutes maximum, but then you really do have to be sharp, except if you're going to university which is università, università, finishing our first topic, which was the length of studies, università can be università triennale, triennale, so three years university, the first cycle, magistrale, magistrale, which are the two years of specialization after the triennale, triennale, and then il dottorato, dottorato, which is PhD, il dottorato. Now, I was saying, when you're at university, there's actually il quarto d'ora accademico, which means the academic 15 minutes, the academic quarter of hour, <laughs> which means that even though the lesson is supposed to start, let's say, at 8, because the lesson at university are longer than before, like in high school, it's actually two hours long, usually that's a period. If the lesson is supposed to start at 8, it won't actually start before 8.15. Of course, it depends on the teacher, professore, but usually that's what they do, because like they allow everyone to get in, because it's like really a lot of people, right? And people are coming like from afar with trains and so on, so also the professor himself or herself takes his or her time. So yeah, quarto d'ora accademico means that 15 minutes of lateness can be accepted and then the hour will start. Also because then when it finishes you have to change, in university it's you who changes, yes, you have to change classroom so you also need time to move around. Let me finish with some curiosities. For example, we don't have any big ball, any prom, non c'è il ballo di fine anno, there is no ending of the year party, Non c'è il ballo di fine anno, but we do have a pizzata di classe, pizzata di classe, which is a class 
um, pizza, meaning that you go to a restaurant and eat pizza all together. And that's really common to do at the end of the year. Pizzata di classe. Also, we don't have un annuario, annuario, like, you know, the album where every student has his picture taken. No, we do have a photo di classe, photo di classe, a picture of the class, like all together. And it's really common to have a diary, un diario, diario, that some schools provide, but you can get yours as well. And on there, then your classmates will write you a dedica, dedica, which is a note, like a dedication, <laughs> I would say. They write something nice, it's supposed to be to you, and then you always keep it. Not always, but you know, I do have them from school. So yeah, this is pretty much how school works in Italy. Let me know in the comments if you found something similar or really different compared to your school culture. Also, if you haven't done it yet and you want to learn more Italian, click the link in the description, download our PDF lessons and learn Italian in the fastest, easiest and most fun way possible. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye bye. Ciao ciao. Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description.